Thank you for tuning in to Hacks and Hobbies with your host, Junaid. In season two of Hacks and Hobbies, we're visited by our amazing guests coming from all walks of life who want to learn their story, their struggles, and their journey on how they got to where they are today. So stick around. In this episode, we get to speak with Tony Bubb. She's a professional lover of life. Isn't that amazing? I mean, professional lover of life, or, or the rest of us are just lovers of life. Um, she's creative, innovator, visionary, and she's got just amazing aura around her. It's, I can't even pronounce that word, but um, I was watching her live videos on Facebook and I was like, dude, she is on fire. This is awesome. I need to get her on the podcast because I love that vibe. So I reached out to her and she's like, absolutely, I would love to. And so here's Tony. Tony, welcome to the podcast. Hello. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here. You're welcome. Uh, we're excited to have you here. This is so cool. So on this podcast, we just talk about our journeys. We talk about uh, you know, where we come from. And I love stories and I love learning, you know, what different things people went through to get to where they are today. And would love to learn about how did you become the professional lover of life? You know, what, what made you like, think about it and like, you know, this is what I want to do with my life. This is what makes me passionate. So how, you know, how did that happen? Like, what happened? Yeah, the story is always interesting to tell because I definitely didn't plan on keeping that title. <laughs> so when I was, I kind of went through my corporate America thing, college, you know, was working and I was working a lot. So probably 80 plus hours a week. I was the girl that went in early, the girl that stayed late. And I eventually got burned out. Uh, I had every issue you can think of from like uh, back issues, stomach issues. Hey, <laughs> how's it going? It's going good. good. <laughs> he can't hear you, sorry. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Uh, so I had uh, just a whole bunch of health issues. And basically, <laughs> basically I... Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> I've told this story, I don't know how many times. I know, uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, basically one day I went into work and I had been watching HGTV's How to Buy an Island and just kind of fantasizing about moving to an island. Mm -hmm. And I literally went into work and bought a one-way flight to St. Thomas, Virgin Islands. I told my best friend I was going and she literally laughed at me on the phone. Like, I think everyone thought I was going crazy. And I was like, no, I just need a break. I need to get away. And so I was in recruiting at the time and I still do a little recruiting here and there. But, uh, and so, you know, when you're looking at everyone's titles, I was like kind of making fun of corporate America and, you know, just professionals in general. And I was like, kind of screw this. I'm a professional lover of life, like <laughs> as a joke. And, and I started writing about my experiences and a lot of people actually quit this where I was working, I'm not going to say where, because it's a pretty big name company, but uh, they, they quit and they've gone off to do their own things and they've been very successful. So my kind of leap of faith inspired others to take a leap of faith. And I kept the name because I started to have pretty, you know, legitimate people reach out and say they liked the title, like as far as director level, VP, CEOs of companies from all over the world. And I'm like, men and women, not just, yeah. you know, women. And so I'm like, oh, well, okay. And then it just kind of became my, my thing yeah. <laughs> and it stuck. <laughs> so that's the story. That's really cool. That mm -hmm. is that's awesome. And I totally get you, man. It's, it's easy to get burned out because you're putting so much of yourself right out there into other people's dreams. Mm. you're putting all of you out into other people's dream. You're not getting yeah. that energy back. And um, it's cool, man. I, I love it. I love the story. It's, it's awesome. Cause recently I did the same thing. I was like, I'm done 
with somebody else's dreams. Like, I'm going to do me. I'm going to yeah. do me. Right. So, so that's where my journey starts. <laughs> Love it. How long ago did you do it? Like three weeks ago. Oh, geez. <laughs> super fresh. Yes, yeah, super fresh. You know, it's funny. I, I, maybe I should do a podcast about all the people <laughs> quitting their jobs. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, it's definitely like a thing right now. So it good is. for you. I'm glad that you, I took the leap of faith. Thank you. So I did it twice. I did it four months ago and then I was like, all right, I need to, I need something. So I went back and I was like, all right, it's, it's now really working out. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna quit because I'm just want to focus on my thing. I love video production and marketing and audio production, making stuff for people basically. That's, That's awesome. my thing. So I was like, I'm, I just want to focus on that thing and help other people in my own way like i don't want to be told what i want to do i want to be i guess i still want to be told what i want to do <laughs> when you are a freelancer or when you ha- you are an entrepreneur you set some things in motion but you're still i guess taking order from other people not really right. order but i don't know what the word is my well you have clients so you're serving yeah. them exactly. right and uh i think you're you're bringing up a, a really good point that find that balance between like going off on your own and remembering that you're still servicing someone at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, I think people sometimes forget about that part (laughs) and how to set boundaries. And a lot of things that I do with some of my clients that have, have left corporate and they're trying to transition over. I say to them, who is your ideal client? Mm -hmm. Like you have the power to create that. And I think a lot of people just want to take whoever they want to, to get paid money, but it's like, you can create, your idea like my hair my hairstylist she's like I don't want to deal with super dramatic like chicks I want cool laid-back people like you Mm -hmm. and and so she'll turn down people so having that power and knowing that you have that ability to create the kind of clientele that you want that are cool fun people to hang out with so like yourself (laughs) that's that's right so I want to I want to find people like myself so then it doesn't feel like that I'm working for somebody else (laughs) right right but I'm also helping them achieve their goals and their journeys and by you know being good at what what they want to do so some of the things that i'm working on is a video course on how to use your smartphone better and make good videos with it i could probably use that okay (laughs) (laughs) i'm the lazy video shooter there is (laughs) (laughs) there's no such thing as lazy we're very so you i guess it's easy to label the word lazy, mm. but all software programmers are super lazy. And <laughs> because they're lazy, they'll come up with ways to solve a problem. I mean, that's why we have genius inventions of software because people are lazy and developers, they'll come around, oh, I can do it this way. Like that's why we have for loops and next case, case, I, don't, I forget all my programming terms so, you're, so you're yeah, slacking but, yes exactly everybody's slacking you get it slack because you know a lot of programmers use slack exactly they do they, they, do, they love to slack <laughs> i'm on slack i mean they they literally made a business out of it it's just, it's just hilarious it's kind of funny i just actually got that like now <laughs> i mean you know i never knew i never knew programmers considered themselves as lazy so mm-hmm. i learned something new today yeah and same with artists, you know, I mean, it's in human nature to be lazy, right? That's mm-hmm. why we have so many different tools that can help us make, you know, do things more efficiently. And like recently I was listening to, I was watching John Oliver talk about automation and how, mm-hmm. how like through the ages you've heard people say, oh, the machines are coming. They're taking my job, right? They're shipping my jibs, my job offshore. You know, other people are taking my jobs. You know, we don't have industrial jobs anymore. And he was like, you know, it's not even that we're shipping off jobs. 50% of the jobs are taken by automation, robots. Mm-hmm. And so what's interesting is that, and it's, it's funny that we end up, end up in this spectrum of talk 
I mean, working for somebody and then your job getting eliminated because now we've hired a robot to do your job. Yeah. So he was making fun. He's like, well, they're never going to find a job. But they're never going to replace me with a robot because who's going to waste 90 seconds talking about different countries and how silly they sound like <laughs> for 90 seconds because robots are all about efficiency. <laughs> like, take that. Well, I actually think the automation thing, I think that people are looking at it the wrong way. I mean, when you say lazy, I think lazy means that you don't have an interest in doing something. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm really excited to do something like shoot the videos, I like the shooting the videos part mm -hmm. and coming up with the ideas. Now, That's do cool. I like the editing part? Oh, no. no. <laughs> you know, so, you know, automating those tasks that us humans, you know, those tedious tasks that mm -hmm. I don't think most people like to be doing that are monotonous and, yes. and it would sucks our energy out so that we can be more human in our interaction with yeah. our clients. And, you know, I think that's why automation is great. I don't think it the is. human interaction is ever going to completely go away. Oh, no, no. <laughs> No, it, it won't go away. We'll we'll just become managers of things. Like right. You still need floor managers. I mean, I saw the video of Tesla's floor, right? Because they, they say we have all these robots to build the cars. But there's still a lot of people that have are managing these robots. Same with Amazon facilities. They have a ton of robots. They go pick up these um, packages and bring them out. But yeah, you're t absolutely right. It's it's some of the tasks that can be automated, need to be automated, and it truly makes our life like a lot easier. So it it just goes down to okay, people who are losing their jobs to automation either need to have a career change or learn something that the human mind like because the human brain is amazing and we can do so many things i mean we're sitting on top of giants like right now like who thought that we could have a conversation over miles and miles without you know without having to be in there in person i mean we've come a long way and we've we've got a long way to go as well so yeah people just need to look at it like okay i can't do that job anymore let's see what else i can do and and that's the other thing we're seeing with this new generation is the millennials, I guess, I, I guess, I, I guess we could label it, is you know they're building their own careers, they're building their own platforms to work around, and it's just really, really amazing. I agree. I agree. I think there's a, a lot of potential out there, and you know, kind of to speak to the the management portion of it, I think that's an area that needs to be focused on more. Um, I think there was a post recently by. Oleg, you know, on LinkedIn, he's pretty oh, well known. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about micromanagement. And I actually wasn't the biggest fan of the post. And because I don't like people complaining about micromanagement and not understanding why micromanagement is in place. And I believe, you know, it's, it's a combination of three factors. And, and one being is that not everyone's meant to be a manager, <laughs> you know, and also people aren't trained. And when I, and I say trained, you know, because a gentleman responded to that post and he's like, well, I've been through all the training and it's all the same stuff and it's not effective. And I go, I'm talking about emotional intelligence, conflict resolution, communication. These are, these are the skills that, especially our communication skills, that because everyone's using technology so much anymore, people don't know how to have real conversations in real life anymore. Absolutely. So, you know, these are the types of things, if we're going to be growing leaders and managers, you need to know how, even if you're just overseeing a robot, because you need to be able to communicate to another human being how to fix that robot. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, I mean, I think that's, there's a big gap there in opportunity for leadership and management training in a whole different way. Oh, absolutely. Um, communication and having that empathy even, right? Mm. To, to connect with another human being is super important because yeah. sure, you can't feel what they're feeling, but have some type of emotion to relay that, hey, I don't, I don't, I don't know what you're going through, but I feel your 
pain, sort of, I guess. There was a practice that uh, the Marriott taught us about how to respond to uh, clients that were upset. And then the first thing I would always have us do, whether we, you know, first of all, I'm an empath. So I literally do usually feel how other people feel. And I've, I've learned, and I've actually talked, I'm talking about that more in some of my videos and stuff, because it really does affect, you know, you and your a work situation and personal. Yeah. But um, they always taught us to say, first, I'm so sorry to hear that. You know, what can I do to help you? So show that compassion. Mm-hmm. And right away, basically, to say that you understand what they're going through, and you're sorry, even if you don't quite get it or you don't agree like just to show that verbally to to the client so no absolutely and what's interesting with empathy so being a ux designer right we're very empathic and and understanding the problems of the user i'm understanding problems that user might face when they're using an application and that's where we're creating different applications for them and how to solve those problems through these applications It can be an enterprise application or it can be a personal or a mobile application. And empathy is very important because we will do a lot of interviews, we'll create personas, we'll create. In the new book by my good friend, Seth Godin, he talks about empathy in marketing. I'm like, that's really, really interesting because like marketing is not advertising. And that's what it's been seen as for the past many years because, I mean, newspapers were created so they can have ad space in it. Radio was created for the same reason and so was television. But internet was just came out of people wanting to collaborate and having a, a system. So if there was an emergency, universities could communicate with each other. And so internet was not created for that reason. So marketing ended up becoming advertising but now that we have we've come 30 years right it was 30 years ago that the world wide web was created we're seeing that marketing is essentially talking about or being passionate about something that's helped you and finding like having the empathy will enable you to essentially market your product on, 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 or be the evangelist for the product that you're passionate about. Like, for yeah. example, I love Apple products because they help me get the job done. And so does that mean I'm marketing for Apple? In a way, yes. But in another way, I'm not getting paid. Like my wife tells me, you should be getting paid by Apple because you've converted so many people to using Apple products. <laughs> yes, I'm just, I'm just an evangelist. I just want people to have a good experience. And that's, right. that's what it comes down to. So empathy in marketing, again, you know, you're understanding what your users are going through and solving those problems for them. Well, I think, you, you know, you, you bring up UX design, and I think that's a, a role that not many people are still familiar with, yet it's probably one of the most vital roles in creating a website. Yes. And, you know, especially speaking about feelings, immediately when I go to a website, I'm like, I'm like, how does this website make me feel, you know? And also the, how you maneuver throughout the website, which I believe is UX uh, or UI, the user experience. Mm-hmm. The right experience and then the user right mm-hmm. yeah which also can cause emotion if it's frustrating <laughs> you know so i i think that's a that's a big part i don't think people really know that a lot of people you know that just go to a website they don't know all the behind the scenes and that that's to me one of the most vital parts of, of building an, an effective website or application so you know that's a really good point that you bring up because being in the ux world And a lot of people, like there's so many more UX entrants uh, in the past few years that I'm like, all right, this is getting saturated. Mm -hmm. But you're right, not a lot of people know about this because just like I don't know anything about building a road or, you know, laying foundation down. Right. You You know, so there's a lot of people that just stay in their own lane, right? They're like, I'm just focusing on this specific aspect of life and work, and I'm just going to go all in, go all in deep, and I'll know everything else 
everything around it. So being a UX designer, I look around and I just see other UX people because that's all I know. So I'm making an effort in going and finding other people that are in different lanes. I'm like, hey, tell, come over here and tell me a little bit about your lane and, and how you operate in this in this. That's so cool. That's really yeah, cool. Yeah, it's good. Well, I don't think people know, like, you know, that different colors, you know, affect them how they feel yeah. and, you know, motivate them to do different things. I think it, it's really, it's really neat. You know, I don't think yeah. a lot of people talk about it actually. So mm-hmm. yeah. I love it. It's cool I love it. That. Thank you for bringing that up because mm-hmm. that's something that I was struggling with myself. Like what color? And I, I'm, a, I'm attracted to red and blue a lot. Mm-hmm. So I have hacks and hobby. I have like these reds and blues. And uh, the background has lots of reds and blues as well. Because for my company, Humble Zone, I'm trying to come up with, okay, I need colors for the website. What color should I go with? So I'm going to go back to the uh, color wheel and and what the emo- different emotions they evoke. I'm like, okay, this is what I need. <laughs> These are the colors I need to use. There's always something that just comes up and you need to learn, constantly learning about yeah awesome awesome thank you (laughs) so some questions that we ask um on the podcast and you haven't mentioned anything about your hobbies but you did mention about your dad's hobbies (laughs) what is one hobby that you wish you got into that you you never had the chance and you're like oh i wish that hobby i got into so it's so interesting, um, that question, because to, in my mind, if I want to do something, I will do it. So mm-hmm. any, if I, I'm about to say rock, just because I haven't done it yet doesn't mean I'm not going to do it. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, you know, that's one that I think I've always wanted to get into a little bit more that I just haven't taken the time, mm-hmm. but I will definitely do it someday. So yeah, usually if I want to do something, I'll do it. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of people, they're like, oh, I don't really have the time to do this and this and this. But lucky for you, you're working for yourself. You know, you make your own time. You make your own hobbies. Well, you know, know. it's interesting that you bring that up because I think that's an, an, an important thing about what I talk about is, you know, people always make an excuse. They say they don't have the time. And, you know, if you read all those articles of things that people regret most when they're on their deathbed, yeah. you know, it's spending time with family and friends. I'd say, I wish I would have taken that trip. I wish I would have done that hobby. Mm -hmm. And you have to make the time. I I just always feel like that's an excuse. You know, people hours on social media day, you know, it's like, you know what, take two of those hours and go do something active or go do your hobby. Mm -hmm. I just think it's an excuse. (laughs) It is. It's it's a very easy excuse. And um, what's funny is yesterday I was watching Cassie Neistat. Um, on YouTube, he's a YouTuber. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's kind of huge, but he was like, "I am leaving." Or goodbye, social media was a was a ta- was a title of his video. I mean, he's a YouTuber and he he films a lot, but he he was like, "Look at this, my average time spent on Twitter and on Instagram," mm-hmm. and he's spending like fifty nine minutes on Twitter and Instagram. He's like, "I'm just." I just have this destructive habit of like, he's like, I'm not going to call it a disease because he knows people like, it's not, it's not, it's not that, but it's like a destructive habit. You just have this habit of picking up your phone and just swiping up, swiping that list, you know, just going through. There's been been a lot of research done on this though. I mean, there is, it it is sort of an addiction. Like you get a dopamine high off of, yeah, you know, like, I could go into that. That's a whole other conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he didn't want to call it an addiction because he's like, I know people with real problems. And so he wanted to call it a destructive habit to be mm. more um, respectful of people who have like serious issues. Mm. So that's why he called it a destructive habit. Destructive habit. And he's talking about how um, when his daughter was born, he put the phone down. And it's like, for one week, I'm not going to use the phone or I'm not going to be on social media. I'm going to spend, you know, take in my, you know, take in the birth of my daughter. And he's like, it's not like I didn't feel happy, but he felt like 
there's this weight lifted off of his shoulder, like a heavy blanket that you carry on around with yourself. You got to check your phone to see what's going on, what's going on. It's like, he didn't have to do that. So he's like, all right, he carries two phones with him. And he's like, so I'm going to delete both Instagram and Twitter from both these phones. And let's see what happens. And then he's, and in this video, he's like walking through. It's like, okay, it's been five hours and I feel really good. I mean, every time I'll open the phone and then I'll look through it. He's like, but I don't have the app. So I just put the phone back. Mm -hmm. So he's like, it's not, I'm, it's not, I'm deleting the apps from my, or it's not that he's quitting those apps. Like he'll still go to Twitter and Instagram on his desktop, but he mm-hmm. just doesn't want immediate access to it on his phone because phones are with us, like wherever we go. Right. And we can waste so much time with it. So really good point. People really need to take time out to actually do what they say we want to do. I mean, and, you know, instead of watching three hours on Netflix, you know, cut that create down. a podcast like you did. Yeah. <laughs> Make a podcast. <laughs> um, and what's funny is the way I started the podcast too, was like, I'm spending two hours driving back and forth from work. And Anchor is a mobile app on your phone. So you can start recording directly from your phone, your podcast episode. Wow. And so it's all my initial podcast episodes were solo episodes. I'm talking about beekeeping. I was like, I could just do this while I drive. I'm just talking to myself. And what's funny is my good friend, um, Dave Calvert, he has a podcast called Car Thoughts with David. And he, <laughs> every single podcast episode is done in his car. His car is a co-host. And all the interviews that he's done is also in the car. It's really cool. That's funny. Well, yeah. hey, that's a good way to you know make a positive out of your commute. Exactly. Exactly. Either listen Love to it. audiobooks, podcasts, or make a podcast. <laughs> there you go. I tried learning Spanish, but that wasn't very productive. When I used to have to commute. Mm-hmm. But I would say Duolingo is a really good app for that. Oh, I love Duolingo. Mm-hmm. I started it a couple of years ago and I started learning like three different languages. I was like, come on, that's not going to work. <laughs> and uh, so talking about making time and doing the commitment and there's this YouTube video I watched and the guy's like, you know what happens? Like New Year's coming, you sit down on the couch and you're like, all right. I'm going to do these things next year. And you make a whole list of the things that you want to do, you, your resolutions, right? And even though you go working out twice a month and you're like, oh, I'm going to go twice a week. He's like, if you just look at the numbers, that's 600% more than what you were doing before. It's not going to stick. It's not going to mm-hmm. stick for a long time. So he said, instead of doing that, just do it once a week. Just add it a little bit at a time. Do that for three months. Then add it, you know, then make it twice a week. Then add it, go, go do that for three months at a time. Because, like, we can't handle that much change. And we'll end up falling behind and be like, oh, oh that didn't continue. So maybe I did the same thing with the Duolingo. I was just going to say, I think the problem is, is that is two things that people usually want, want the end result of the change right away. Yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, then they, they try to, to take on too much at once. So it's not even that they're doing too much of one thing. It's that because usually most people are stressed out and it's causing you know, whether it's, you know, weight issues or, you know, anxiety or whatever it is. Uh, they try to do all these things and, you know, that's why I was building the platform I was building before was so that you can focus on one area, which is the core issue. So even when I work with my clients, I'm like, let's, let's focus on one core issue before we get into even the career change. Because, uh, you know, the one thing I didn't like about when I was coached by some people is they would literally give me like so much stuff to do at once. And I was like, I just, I told you I have anxiety issues. Like I'm stressed out. I'm like, and you want me to work on this right now? Like, so 
So I think that's the problem is that it's just unrealistic. And like you said, like the human brain, if you're already overwhelmed, which most people are, they're overwhelmed, they've got families, they're working, they're going through other changes and they've got other family members that they're taking care of outside of their immediate family. So it's like, you've got to focus on just one thing, whether it's, and I always say, go to your self care first, because that's usually what falls off. You're taking care of, you know, at the beginning of this, podcast, you, you said that we're pouring energy into everyone else's dreams and problems. Mm-hmm. Why don't we pour that energy into ourselves more? Exactly. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> I think, and this came to me yesterday, was the reason we do pour it in our hope, like our energy into other people's dreams rather than our own is it is easier. Mm. Like I'm when I go to a job, I know well, what list of things I need to work on. Like somebody's already created the list. You come here, you talk to this person, this person, get this stuff done, right. and then you're done for the day. So somebody's already made the list for you, so it's easier, and that's why people sit through hours in traffic because. I want to go to their comfort zone. Thank you for listening right. to Hacks and Hobbies. Office. You can find additional Coffee, information on the guest today on the website, hacksandhobbies.com. Please feel free to subscribe to the podcast so here. you don't miss out on upcoming it's interviews easy. with amazing guests. Right. But when you do stuff for yourself, it's super hard. <laughs> I, was, I was just talking about this, you know, I've had several of these conversations recently and or, you know, all the fellow entrepreneurs out there. And I, I'm not by any means judging anyone, right. but I, I don't believe that entrepreneurship is always accurately represented on social media. And that's why it looks like this glamorous, like, oh, I'm getting speaking engagements and I'm getting, you know, this award and I've got this client. I'm like, when I was going through my startup, you know, I would talk about all of the ups and downs mm-hmm. and no one talks about the taxes and, you know, figuring out how to make it, you know, the first three months, the first six months, the first year, you know, no one talks about all that stuff. <laughs> talks about it. Mm-hmm. You know, no one talks about how, you know, you're, you know, I was bootstrapping. So I was still, you know, doing contract work, you mm-hmm. know, and, until we got funding and stuff. So they talk about it, but in more of like a nostalgic kind of like, yeah, like reminiscing on the past. Like, Oh, I've been through that. So you know, I feel like you should never talk or like super, super in the moment or still going through it. Mm. But, you know, be realistic about entrepreneurship because not everyone else is made for that either. And that's why I feel like there are some organizations out there, but I feel like there needs to be a, like a way to find your tribe kind of thing. So mm. to support that, you through that. You're absolutely right. And what's interesting is, you will have like people have created or companies have created these mastermind groups where Mm -hmm. like, I think I saw an ad for, Hey, if you're a CEO, come join the CEO group. I think it was on Facebook and you're paying a monthly fee, but you're talking to other CEOs that are facing problems that are facing the same issues that you might be facing. It's like, that's a really smart way to go. it. And then I saw more of more, more and more of it when I joined the community on Facebook for, um, for podcasters and I'm like, Whoa, this is really cool because everybody is talking about my lang, you know, talking in my language and I can totally tell them and help them on what they, what they need to do and get moving to the next step. Yeah. Love it. All right. We got some questions left and then we can see what you think. All right. So what is your favorite movie or TV show? And if none, how about a book? I don't watch much TV, but I've actually been watching, trying to watch more of it because I need to get out of my left logical brain. Mm -hmm. And so when I do go to TV, it's usually humor. And so I love the Goldbergs. Oh my God. (laughs) Funny. (laughs) Yes, because it's set in, you know, the 80s. And I just think it's hilarious. It just makes Mm -hmm. me laugh every time. And I like that it's creative. Uh, you know, I just never liked the kind of humor that 
I don't know how you say this. It's inappropriate, I guess. I feel like the good humor is when you can be, you, you have to be creative and you're not using exactly. inappropriate yeah. things, yes. you know, yeah. to, to make people laugh. So mm -hmm. really good TV, I think. And it has lessons in it too. It's great all around. <laughs> it's really great. Uh, you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. So talking about, you know, having funny stuff and not be profane is yes. like, I love that because now I can share that with my kids. I can share those jokes with my right. kids. And there's this, um, there's this new group on Facebook called Dry Bar Comedy. Oh, okay. And it's hilarious and they don't use any profanity because it's a dry bar. I guess when you're not drunk, you don't cuss. I get it. I get it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that makes sense. Funny. All right. What is your favorite superhero? I would have to say it's Superwoman because of the truth lasso. So you mean Wonder Woman? Oh, Wonder Woman. That's right. I'm so sorry. <laughs> 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 oh gosh yes wonder woman thank you for the correction uh so yeah i just you know as an empath i can usually tell if people are lying so i just ooh, does not sit too well with me you know and everyone you know i think lies on accident like that's just because of our our memories and our brains but i mean like legit lying i just don't like it and i can usually call people out and it's really hard for me to to have relationships because mm -hmm. I feel like they're inauthentic, so. Well, so you already have that superpower. You don't need the lasso. Yeah. No, I don't. But. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. If you were a board game, what would it be? Oh. Hmm. Okay. So the first couple ones that came to mind were Mousetrap. Or operation. Oh wait, okay. or trouble. I don't know. I can't. Trouble. I can't decide. <laughs> <laughs> those are those are pretty good, cool board games. Um, I haven't heard of mouse traps, so I'm gonna have to do some research on. <laughs> okay. But wow, they're like cool. interactive board games. So okay. You know. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So where can my audience find you? I yeah. So I'm I'm mostly on LinkedIn. Okay. That's where I kind of focus the majority of my time. And then on Facebook, I, I do After Dark series. So that's more so when I just kind of have a conversation of, you know, just talking about deeper, darker topics that, you know, most people don't like to talk about. And I talk about them at night. And my website is Tony Bub. So it's T O N I and then B U B B dot com. So mm -hmm. those are the easiest ways to find me. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. And so where did the bub come from? Because I noticed that's not your name. <laughs> or is it? It is my name. That's my last okay. name. Oh, perfect. Okay. And that's English. So that's from my dad's side of the family. Uh, and I actually eventually want to, uh, I have, I actually own the domain name heybub.com. Oh, nice. And so I had this idea, you know, when I first got into entrepreneurship, it, I wanted to create really funny, cool t-shirt names kind of making fun of like work stuff like hey bub like how was that meeting like which one you know I'm, I'm on my way to another one like funny stuff like that I definitely want to do something with hey bub someday I've got a logo for it and everything but time and place nice, working on nice. some bigger things right now <laughs> yes of course um, you'd be surprised on how like people would be working on something big but then it's those tiny things like my friend, is, she's a videographer, but she absolutely loves baking. It's like, you yeah. should do something with baking, like just create these short videos. He's like, you know, that's a good idea. I'm going to do a series of trying out these recipes. And it's like, yeah, just do that. You know, so we'll see where that heads out. But yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's when you create something that you're absolutely passionate about and it just blows up. Another example that I can uh, share, he's an actor. He played a lot. <laughs> he played a lot of movies. <laughs> That's true, John. Oh, that guy. That guy. <laughs> you know, if it was my sister, you know, me and my sister, she probably, I, I say stuff like that and she guesses it. I'm like, you know that one girl in on that one show? And she's like, yeah, that girl. I'm like, how did you know that? 
Sorry, we don't have that family tie, so. Right, right, we don't. Um, so he was in, I think he was in Looper, and he was in um, Inception, hmm. Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Okay. So um, he was on Tim Ferriss' show, and he talks about how, hmm. how he, cre- him and his brother created Hit Record. And they were like, it was just a fun project, and people would just come here, and so... And then, like six years from then, like from then, like there's TV shows coming off of it that's that are getting funding. There's movies that are coming off of it, and it's like I I started out as a hobby, and now it looks like it's becoming something really big. And he's yeah. like, he's already an actor, but he's like, this is it's it's so much so much passion, and the community is like half a million people in there. Uh, and you could just go there and you could pick up projects. You can pick up somebody's written a poem and you can say, okay, I'm going to do spoken word for this. So you can do all sorts of things. It's, it's really, it's really awesome. I love it. I've heard a, a lot of stories like that, actually. I, mm-hmm. I know I, one entrepreneur that was working on something and they were kind of like, they were in this really sticky situation and then they ac- accidentally came up with this app called Fuji <laughs> where you can just like, and it's been in movies and all this stuff, but you can just like, it's like an, it's like an emoji that's the shape of a piece of food. And that's how you order. Oh, basically. that's so cool. Yeah. And it's like totally blown up, but it was like, they just kind of were twiddling their t- thumbs. They were about to run out of money, I think for their other concept. And yeah, so yeah. that's, that's where the magic happens. It does. When yeah. Those dark corners. Well, Tony, this was a lot of fun. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I really wish you the best. Thank you. And um, we'll certainly keep in touch, entrepreneur to entrepreneur. Yes. Anything I can help you with, please reach out. Sounds good. I appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me, Janaid. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Okay, bye. Bye. Congratulations, you made it to the end of the episode. Thanks so much for listening to our guest on this episode. Please send me an email at junaid at hexandhobbies.com to tell me what you loved about our guest today. You could find links mentioned in this episode on the hexandhobbies.com website. 